so let's transition to I would say the let's say one A one B right when it comes to importance and that's quarterback. And, and and we spent a lot of time on Tyler Buckner. We won't spend a ton of time on him again now. But the reality is, is is there a people ask, is there a quarterback battle at Notre Dame? Yes, there is a quarterback battle. Tyler Buckner still has a lot to prove. We discussed that the other day with with when we had a really good question about that. But at the same time, Ryan, we uh, we will also admit as as much as I love Drew Pine as a kid and a leader and all those type of things, this team's potential is this team's ceiling is going to be determined by how good Tyler Buckner is this season. Yeah. And when Tyler Buckner's on, this team is going to be very hard to stop. And I don't care who they're playing. When Tyler Buckner's off, this offense is going to be easier to stop. And the Virginia Tech game is a perfect example because in the first half he was on and Virginia Tech had zero answers, zero. I mean, they couldn't stop him. Second half, they were able to do some things that caused him to get out of his game. He wasn't as, he wasn't making the quick decisions. He wasn't as accurate and all that. He was kind of starting to scramble more. And it slowed him down. And that, to me, is that game is going to epitomize his sophomore season. The question, again, is going to be which version do we see most often? Right. That's going to be the question. Do we see the good version of Tyler Buckner, which to me makes this offense elite, potentially elite? Or do we see an inconsistent sophomore who's really being a full-time quarterback for the first time since 2019? Right. You know, I mean, it's lost his senior year. We've talked about in 2020 because of COVID last year, he was, he was practiced and used as more of a rotational niche player. Now it's, he's the guy. What kind of jump does he make? Because he's another sophomore in this class whose success really ties into the overall success of the team. Cause again, sophomores equal success on offense, success on offense equals success as a team. And and Tyler Buckner is a big is going to be a big big part of that. And I think that Tyler Buckner could be a really successful college player if he didn't have the athletic upside that he has as a player. Like if he was strictly just a passer to his degree. So I think that he's. I think people really undersell the fact that like man, go look at like where he was in high school coming out. The kid could throw the football, and he could throw the football just about as any, good as anyone in the country. And that's I think something that's being undersold a little bit. There was a lot of huge flashes in the passing game that I'm really excited about. But, Brian, this is where, like, the challenge of working against a dual threat quarterback, and I know you've talked about this so much, is even when he's not maybe pinpoint on a day mm -hmm. he's dealing, the fact that he also has that other element of being able to use his running, use his legs, be able to take some, take an extra defender out of the box, even when he's not keeping the football, those things now, I mean, every single play you have to deal with Tyler Buckner, even if he's right. straight handed it off on a zone play. You're right. still like, oh, I gotta be there just in case there's a pull, right? Like this is where, when he when it's going well, it's unstoppable. Like it right. really is. If he's throwing the football well, because he the running element's always going to be there. Tyler Buckner's always going to be that type of athlete. But if he takes the step that we think he can as a passer this year, is yeah. consistent in that regard, then it's. I mean, you have to you have to count for it in every single play, and that is where. I mean, that's where defense coordinators start to have headaches is when you have to account for a player on every single snap. Well, we've talked about 2017 being the comparison for this. And, and I've talked about how USC came into that 2017 game against Notre Dame saying we're going to do everything we can to stop them from running the ball. And Chip Long did a couple things that were really good in that game. Number one is he got Kevin Stefferson on going on jets early, right, uh, if, if you remember that. Uh he, I think it was like uh, they ran like a reverse early. He didn't, you know, I always confuse his jets and reverses with the ones from Braden Lindsay two years later. His didn't go for big plays, but they were enough to kind of slow them down. Then you had Brandon pulling the ball. He had a couple early runs, but the big thing was on the first, the, so the first drive, Notre Dame punts, uh, Tavon, USC gets the ball. Tavon Coney rips it out of Sam Darnold's hand. Notre Dame gets the ball back. And I believe that drive ended with Brandon banging a post route over the top to Equinemius St. Brown for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Next drive, Notre Dame gets the ball, and Brandon throws another vertical pass for a touchdown. It was a back shoulder to Kevin uh, Stefferson. Once Brandon showed the ability to hit the ball, hit throws down the field, USC had zero answers. Zero. Brandon went mm -hmm. 9 of 19 for 120 yards that game. But, but, but because he's the dual threat guy, they were already worried about him running. Now they had to protect over the top of their head for deep balls. It made them uh, it made them undefensible. Then you look at another game later on down the down the, the line. You you look at 
the NC State game. He goes 10 of 19 for 104 yards. Not overly effective, right? But he had a backside seam throw early in that game over the top to Durham Smythe that, that really started to take some of the pressure off because NC State was like, okay, we've got to protect it. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, you open up running lanes. And then the final example is, you know, the game that I viewed to be brand, the best career, best game of Brandon's career was the Wake Forest game. He placed, he played three quarters of football. He racked up 100, 280 passing yards in that game. He racked up 110 rushing yards that game. He only played three quarters of football. Brandon went 15 of 30 in that game, completed 50% of his passes. Now, he should have been 16 of 30 because Chase had a bomb hit him right in the face, right, that he dropped. Yep. But, okay, 16 of 30 doesn't exactly change the narrative. And, and the point is is that, that Brandon didn't have to be – he didn't have to look like Brady Quinn or Jimmy Clausen or, or Jack Cohn for that offense to be – unguardable un, undefensible for a, a good month and a half of the season he just had to be solid now i would say that that tyler buckner is a more dynamic passer than brandon is because he has he's always shown a better feel and better accuracy and he hasn't necessarily had his mind warped into a negative thing the way that brandon was his first two years working with mike sanford so again it, it's it, it's expect what is the expectation of this of this team have to be and do you need Brand, you know, Tyler Buckner to be a 35, 4,000 yard passer? You know, I don't think you do. He just needs to be good, a good passer to where you have to defend it. You have to respect it. And if you don't respect it, he's going to beat you with it. And that that, as you said, that's the difficulty with a dual threat quarterback because when Brandon wasn't on his game r- r- throwing, he could still do things as a runner to hurt you. Sure. Whereas if Jack Cohn wasn't on his game as a passer, and I would make the same case about Ian Book. If Ian Book wasn't on his game as a passer, Ian Book was not a designed runner. He was a guy that could scramble, right? Yep. That's not as that's not as dynamic to me if you're just a scrambler. It's what makes guys like Tyler so effective. And as we've seen over the years, it's guys that can not only make plays with their legs in the run game, pass game, but also guys that can make plays in the run game. And that's a big difference between like Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen in the NFL. They're both mm-hmm. very athletic players, but Pat Mahomes' athleticism is, is held strictly to the pass game, where mm-hmm. Josh Allen's run impact in the run game is 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 not just with scrambles, but it's all not run game, but his legs he uses his legs not just in the in the pass game, but he can also use it in the run game, sure. and, and so it's really it's a it's a great advantage to have a guy like that, especially in college, in my opinion. And so, but you know, again, we go back to is Tyler going to be that guy consistently? Or is it just going to be a guy that flashes? And yeah. and I think that's going to be the difference between a ten and two team and a team that's you know sitting down in the last you know the day, Sunday after the the conference championships and saying okay what seat are we going to be in the playoff today? You know I think that's the difference is his play and that's again why these two are tied because the better the line is the better the run game is the better you take some of that burden off of Tyler Buckner. With then, if he responds by being an impact player in what you ask him to do, this offense becomes very, very hard to defend. Quarterback's the most important position in sports. I mean, we don't really have to harp on that too much to know that this team is going to be as good as Tyler Buckner can lead them to, Mm -hmm. right? Like, that is the end-all, be-all to it. I'll say this, Brian, because we I know, obviously, you have the the deep coaching background. I know we kind of take this from a coaching angle sometime. As a former defensive coach, having a guy like a Tyler Buckner – if he was going against me, he would be the biggest headache in the world because at the end of the day, football is a numbers game, right? So I'm thinking right now, uh, you know, we're going to sneak somebody down in the box. We're going to play a little two, uh, play a little single high, get that extra safety down because the RPO game is going to be predicated on like, hey, let's get that extra defender out of the box. So I'm going to bring an extra guy down into the box. But then as soon as Tyler, like they hit a two verts on one side and, and you're saying playing single high, then like, oh man, now I got to bring two high because I know that they now have the threat to push the ball down the field. It's such a, football is such a chess match, but it's also defensively, it's much more of a reactive type of thing, whereas offense can kind of dictate a little bit more than a defense can dictate sometimes. So when you have a player like a Tyler Buckner who can hurt you in so many different ways, if he's on his game, it's almost impossible to stop every facet of an offense. Well, it is impossible to stop every facet of an offense. So I could not agree with you more, though. It's the fact that when you take everything into account, the fact that Tyler Buckner is a dynamic player, a dynamic athlete potentially, well, dynamic athlete, dynamic player potentially, and he's also the quarterback of your team, 
that's where you're looking at him and saying that is he's going to be the the key to unlocking how good this team overall can be, not even just on the offensive side of the football. 